Okay, here we go. Um, what I'm going to show you how to do is use the multi sub object material inside of 3D's Max. Um, pretty simple and comes in handy when you're really wanting to apply one single material that has a bunch of different things applied to only one single object that is all. Um, oh, I don't remember what the word is. It's just all connected to one object and it's not made up of multiple objects. So basically, uh, for example, uh, let me go ahead and maximize this. A good way to, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, a good way to uh, determine what you're actually doing is to uh, do it this way, for example. Let's give you a good idea. Um, first thing, you want to create a plane. 4x4 four four is fine for now, because we're not doing nothing fancy. Uh, we'll go to convert to edible poly and we'll grab a few faces um, and then um, extrude them pretty good and hit OK. Now what we've got here should or should not be exactly what we wanted. Let's just make this a little bit more random. And there we go. Now what we're going to do before we go any further is select the tops of these buildings. And then um, I'm going to go in here, down into while you're still in the polygon edible poly. And it's somewhere in here. We'll do set ID as 1 and leave it the same. Now for the sides of the buildings, we're going to do the same thing without moving them, of course. I'm going to select all the sides. Oops. Make sure you don't deselect anything. It gets kind of annoying. Of all the buildings. And here, 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 and here. And we got them all selected. And now what we're going to do is set the material ID to 2. And that's what that does. And for the ground, I'm going to go, um, what's it doing here? Uh, don't you just hate life? Turn that off and turn it back on, and it's still not letting me select. Um, something to see here. Anyway, we ran into some te technical difficulties, but it doesn't matter. Basically, what you're going to do with the ground is select all the ground faces and um, set the. Where's it at? Um, okay, that's weird. Uh, let's see. Yeah, you basically select all these ground pieces, which is not letting me. I don't know why. But and you're going to set the material ID to 3 on the ground faces and be done. So that's that. Um, now, what we got to do is if you can click this little doohickey right here, and basically how I drag that is if it's not showing all of it, you middle mouse click and drag. Or if you're lazy or you want to be really quick, you can hit the letter M to bring up the material editor. And what we're going to go do in here is go down to standard and click multi sub object. Discard the old material and we'll set the number of materials to three. Well, normally you do three, but in my case, since I only was able to set two IDs, we're going to select two and um, go from there. And since the top of the building is I mean, you know, generally they're going to be probably gray, so I don't really know, but for now we're going to make them gray. And the sides will make them um, more of a lighter gray. And if you want to, um, if you can find a, uh, let's add a checker pattern and uh, maybe uh, tile it 10 by 10 and go back up. 
and we got this. Now basically what you're gonna do is just click and drag onto your object and you can't really see it now but if you uh, render out you see what we got and if I go back in here you can see what I've done the material ID 1 which was the top of the building just remains gray and the sides of the buildings are going to be a checker pattern which is exactly what we want so that's basically how you use the multi sub object material it comes in handy when you're wanting to you know do exactly as I said have one uniform object that's connected and you want to apply more than one texture or collar to it that's one way to do it. Okay, thanks for watching.